Oh, welcome, welcome everyone uh, to the Mentoring Lounge. Today's topic is four more ways to negate or destroy a mentoring arrangement. And we're going to go through those four, but I just want to emphasize there were six before that. <laughs> so there's two other videos in this series. So this is the third of three. And uh, Doug and I were um, given some questions about what are ways to destroy, negate mentoring arrangements. So we sat down and said, okay, let's see what we got to work with here. And um, we came up with these 10. Why 10? We could probably have done eight, could have done nine, but we ended up with 10. And uh, we're going to share the last four uh, today. So we have this notion of lack of confidentiality. We have um, negating or neglecting personal development, I guess is a better way of saying it. Inconsistent feed forward and support and a lack of accountability. So we'll be going through those with you. So again, the Mentoring Lounge is with the International Mentoring Community. This is a certification body uh, that uh, assists persons who want to learn more about mentor practices and uh, who would like to get recognition all the way up to certification. Now, there are different recognition components to it. Just even going through the process of getting ready for certification is recognition in and of itself. Doug and I have different roles in IMC. Doug, you want to just have a brief introduction on what your role is in IMC? Sure. I'm uh, Doug Lawrence. I'm one of the co-founders of the International Mentoring Community, and I am the director of practice per se. So I have a, a deep uh, mentoring practice, and I bring that to the, the certification process through uh, my role as a journey mentor. And um, I take on the role of uh, director of education and certification. And um, I'm not as deep into practice as what uh, Doug is. So that's why we sort of divvied up things a little bit, just so that we could uh, stay on top of how we might be able to assist you um, in your mentoring uh, journey, uh, mentoring adventure. So with that, let's get into it. So ways to negate or destroy a mentoring arrangement. Well, this was an interesting topic that came to us. Um, we're reframing it from questions that we received. And um, we thought that what we would do is take some time to get ready to answer these. And uh, so that's why we broke it up into three uh, videos, uh, three, three, and four, just so that we have a bit of a chance to dig around a little bit in our own ideas and what we wanted to share with you. So. The first one that um, came to mind for this video is this notion of lack of confidentiality. Now, confidence is an important element of any mentoring arrangement. I think that uh, we would all agree to that, is that what gets shared in that mentoring arrangement uh, while establishing that relationship is within that arrangement. Now. I might say that there is at least one big exception, which is if we notice someone's talking about harm to self or to others, then we may have to break confidence. I, I understand that, and I think it's worth mentioning that at this point in time. But I think where someone asked this question, they were sort of reflecting on, they sort of went, oops, I broke confidence and shared something with someone. And, um, you know, does that make me a bad person was sort of the gist of the, of the question. And um, I said, well, not, not really. I think what you've got to do is you've got to a own up to the break of confidence, have a little conversation with the, the mentee about what's going on and see where that sits with you. So, that was one example. So sometimes we might use a phrase like breach of trust or a little, little oopsie happened kind of idea. I'm not trying to belittle what that person was attempting to share or, you know, their feelings associated with it. 
but sometimes things happen and um, I don't necessarily want to get to a point where we're making a mountain out of a molehill <laughs> at the same time. So Doug, um, anything about that, but certainly do you want to suggest one as well? Any thoughts about what I just shared or sharing a new one? Well, I've, the, the lack of confidentiality, I've had a uh, situation, this would be a, a few years ago, where I was getting set to mentor uh, a number of different people in an organization. And to make a what could be a very long story a little bit shorter, I was sitting down to have my first meeting with a young lady who worked in this organization. And I had my notebook and a pen out on the table. And she asked me if I was planning on taking notes of our conversation, to which I said, yeah, yes, I thought I would. And she said, then we're done. And she actually got up and started to leave. And I said, well, just a minute, let's talk our way through this. And it was important for her to understand that I acted, I carried out my practice based on the premise of confidentiality being one of the things that needed to be addressed right at the very beginning. Part of why she felt the way she did was because there was a lack of trust with the management of that particular organization. So I had to take her beyond that so that I could build, help work with her to build that level of confidentiality and trust so that we could move forward with what we had to do. And I think there's a bit of a psychosocial component in there from a safety, if I use that term, a holistic uh, um, psychological, social safety aspect. You want to speak to that just a little bit, just elaborate on that? Well, the, 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 with the psychosocial part, the objective of focusing on that or even thinking about it is to create that safe place for the conversation to take place. That's what it's, what it's all about is I need to be able to, when I sit down with somebody, I need to, in a very short, compressed period of time, Number one, I have to be able to develop or build trust. And the second part is the, the, the psychosocial part of it is I need to be able to create that safe place for the conversation to take place. So I would think that probably one of the better ideas that we could share with persons who are listening in, better, and I'm going to go kinder, wiser, is to set expectations about what does confidentiality mean in this mentoring arrangement that if it feels as though it is broken from either perspective, mentor or mentee, that a, an open conversation can now come up on top of the table and go, hang on a minute, we got to have a chat about this. Whereas, like, for example, the young woman you were mentioning almost didn't have that conversation with you until you were able to go, oh, oh hang on, come, come back, let's have that conversation. And I'm thinking that was one of the ways that really built the trust between the two of you, was it not? Yes. And the other part that helped build the trust was putting my notebook and pen back in my my. <laughs> so did you ever get to a point where you brought out that notebook and pen? Because I, I know you like to document through trigger words, yeah. or did you always have to keep that notebook and pen away in that relationship? And with that organization eroded so badly, I I ended up having to leave the notebook and pen in in my briefcase. And the challenge I had was I was meeting with, I think it was between six and eight people over every day for, I think it was three days. And so what I would end up doing is at nighttime, when I'd get back to my hotel, I would recall the conversations and try and summarize them in my notebook and and use that as my reference points. And yet I had to use those trigger words that you had mentioned, you know, in order to be able to recall all those things. And sometimes... If I got a break in in my scheduling over the course of those three days, I would kind of sneak a few notes and stuff into my notebook. But for the most part, I 
I needed to build the trust and and get us to where. So I left my notebook put away in the briefcases often or as much as I could. Yeah, I had one similar, like I've only had one in all my years of doing it. And for whatever reason, what sparked in me was I just happened to have some sticky notes with me. And what I said to the person was, can I just write down a trigger word, but I'm going to put it here on the sticky note between us so that you know I've just got that word there and that's all I've got to work with so that you understand, oh, okay, this is what's happening. But what I found was that it actually triggered something in them. We were then able to look at a little bit more of a deeper root cause of what was going on. Now, I didn't, you know, oh, well, I, this is how I'm going to deal with it, right? It's just something that happened. And I went, oh, okay. I, I haven't had to use it since, but I just thought I'd bring it to the foreground. But I don't think I've ever mentioned that to you, Doug. So what do you think of that idea? I'd just be curious. The, the post-it note idea? Yeah, just writing post-it note, but putting it on the table, not afterwards or something, just so that the person knew how I learn and remember to be able to be supportive to them. Any yeah, thoughts I, about it? Great idea. I I would definitely be relying on my read on body language to be able to say, you know, is this person okay, really truly okay with it? And and then looking at it from the aspect of, okay, what are my next steps if I've got the, the post-it note sitting between us? Or what does that do for us as far as creating that psychosocial place of safety for the conversation to have? Having the post-it note is is a step, but you know, do we understand or know what the next step after that is going to be? And will that erode or will that solidify what we're talking about? Yeah, I guess I, I was... I was fortunate that the person saw the value in it and went, okay. But extending that by somewhat, what I'm thinking now is, what if I gave half of the sticky notes to the mentee and asked them to write down their trigger words? And then they can take those away. I have mine as ways to remember things. And then the trust is, well, I'm just going to use the trigger words to write up some notes to remember what we're talking about, not that they would ever end up in someone else's you know, report or anything like that. So, okay. Like I say, sometimes we, we've never talked about this one and because when preparing for this, I remembered all of a sudden that I had done it this way and I thought, hey, I'll bring it into the conversation and see what happens. <laughs> so let's go on to the next one. Uh, the next one is the notion of neglecting personal development for you as the mentor. And um, there are those that I have shared conversations with, and I said, you know, have you done any updating? What's what's some key new learnings you've got? Oh, I haven't really done anything. I just keep using the same things I have over and over again. And I went, so I didn't actually do it, but I, I, I felt like I was going to scratch my head, right? But I didn't move my hands up to my head, right? So I just went, mm, okay, this is, this is interesting. And why was this? And because there is this notion of stagnation, old knowledge, and sometimes we need to improve upon it, all right? So thoughts around this notion of neglecting personal development as a mentor. And by extension, it, it is with the mentee as well. But let's talk about from the mentor perspective right now. Thoughts? Well, for me, I have a continuous learning and development process that I go through all the time. And we all do. We just don't realize it. And what it is, is that I'm looking, what are the things, and basically it's it's using reflection as, as a way to, to do it. But, you know, what, what are we going to do differently next time? And so I take each and every mentoring relationship, each and every mentoring session that I have, I'm looking for what are the things that I can take away that are going to help me when I maybe talk to somebody tomorrow about something similar. So I'm learning as I go along that path. And the same for the mentee is that as long as I, I 
break down or I establish what what the the nature of the relationship's going to be and and help the the mentee understand that you too are going to learn from our conversations and and things that we do so that it does become a continuous learning environment for both of us. So that reflection in and on actually brings to the foreground new resources because you're consolidating what you found. And if there is a gap, you go look for it as a mentor and then bring it. And by sharing it into that arrangement, you are helping both of you because what's the phrase? Um, you educate what you love to learn. And um, I, if we can instill that in the mentee as well, because we role model it as mentors, hey, this is wonderful, right? This is, this is great. So I, I think that there's something to be said for this notion of reflection and getting really good, better <laughs> at reflecting. And I think that one of the things that I've always picked up from you over the years was the depth of your mentoring log with your reflections. You're able to then share, okay, this is what I learned here. This is the new resource. And I can link it back to this situation. This is what was happening. So the relevance of that story then deepens and enriches. A am I being fair there? I, I know I, I know you're nodding your head, but yes. No, no, you're more than fair. I'm finding nowadays that the whole storytelling, story sharing part of mentoring is something that we need to really focus on and we need to be comfortable with what that's all about because I'm finding that, and even in some respects with the work in the mental health space, is that being able to tell a relevant or a story that's relevant to the situation is really, really important. And we just need to be able to do more of that. And, and that comes from this notion of personal development. Yes. Right. Because as you advance as a mentor, so you can help the mentee decide what of what you share they're going to then incorporate into what's going on. Yeah, okay. Well, let's take a look at the next one. Um, this is always a fascinating one and it's around the notion of inconsistent feed forward and the support that goes with that. Now, I'm emphasizing feed forward because most people use the word feed back. And it's a little bit like uh, some other terms that we throw into mentoring that you sort of have to scratch your head. And this time, feedback has a sense of, well, something happened. I'm going to go back into the history, maybe a week later, come back and give you some backstory of what I think helped hold you back. <laughs> it's sort of, I, I start to feel this, oh, hang on a minute, versus, well, something's happening, so let's do some feed forward. In the moment, what is it that we can take and move us forward because of what you shared? Even if I, as a mentor, aren't complete in my full understanding of what the conversation's about, I can still open it up, right, to clarify the commitments and expectations that go with it. That's one of the ways of, of looking at getting around or supporting this notion of feed forward. And I believe that sometimes our use of words here let us down as mentors. And sometimes we've got to claim new terms that bring forward the really great ideas that can support the mentoring arrangement. So there is this notion of inconsistent feed, okay, back, forward. I preferred feed forward and the support that goes with it. And being able to provide that feed forward gives us this notion of clarity of expectations and commitments. Any thoughts to that? And then please add anything that sort of strikes you as something that's important here as well. Well, I, I think whether it's feedback or feed forward, 
I think the, the, there's an expectation on the part of the mentee that the mentor is going to guide them, take them on a journey, all of those things in order to be able to help them deal with or come up with a strategy to be able to deal with a particular situation. And if, if I, as a, as a mentor, are providing inconsistent or messages or processes or strategies that are not consistent, basically is the only word I can think of, then I'm not living up to my expectations of, of what the mentee is expecting from, from me. And conversely, it can work the other way as well. So that would suggest probably two things. One would be regular check-ins around this because if if we're always getting, oh, let me do it this way. If I'm a mentor and I'm interacting with a mentee and I'm giving them insights about what happened two weeks ago or whatever versus helping them now, I'm lessening their immediate movement of learning because I'm there's like a two week gap or something there. So regular check-ins, even asking things like, so what is it that you've learned from our time together today? That's a regular check-in is a form of feed forward. If, even if we don't call it feed forward, right? That's a regular check-in to sort of see what's, what's happening here. But the second part to this and this is sort of sparked by a conversation we had the other day. It was the notion is that the mentoring arrangement doesn't necessarily happen in isolation. There may be an organization, an association, someone who sponsored that the two get together. Now, it could be the mentee's business and your business as a, as a mentor. But, so there's something else that's around this that you need that we need to take into consideration. And that goes back to, I think the point that we were raising with the prior one is mentors have to go and get education. They need to stay on top of what is taking place. So let me use a really good example. And it's not that I'm trying to push this. If there's anything I would pull it is looking at language like feedback, feed forward. Doug, you know, one, reverse mentoring, peer mentoring kind of, yeah, right? There, there's still these terms that are around that sometimes will hold us back, right? What are the terms that you can use as a mentor to move forward? That, that, that's what I'm attempting to do. Not, I'm, I'm probably adding a lot more to this than I need to at the moment. Maybe my point's been made, but um any thoughts before we move on to the last one around what I just shared? No, I don't. I'm struggling somewhat with the whole inconsistency picture and looking at it from a deeper, richer mentoring experience more so than anything else is if my our objective is that deeper, richer mentoring experience which is fueled, of course, by, you know, the personal development and a, and a number of other things as well. And if I'm not consistent in my approach in how I deal with that, am I not doing a disservice to my mentee? Yeah. Well, I, that probably leans a little bit into the next one. Okay, so let's use that as a bridge. It's this notion of the lack of accountability. As a mentor... Certainly at the beginning, you're accountable for the arrangement and welcoming the mentee in. Eventually, we would hope it gets to the point that while each of you has accountability for the arrangement, it has a little bit more of a sharedness. And that comes from the, well, I'm responsible to be in this arrangement from both the mentor and mentee perspective. Because sometimes the mentee in a mentoring arrangement can become a mentor. And we need to acknowledge that. Because there are people who go, well, I'm the mentor. You are my mentee. There's no way that you're going to mentor me in anything. We've heard those kind of things. And in today's world, no. <laughs> 
right? There are times when the conversations can shift 180 degrees if we want to use a number, 180 degrees and zero kind of idea. So this notion of you're accountable to account for something and responsible to do things. What's it, what about this word accountability when it fits into mentoring from your perspective? Well, I'm accountable for building a relationship. I'm accountable for making sure that the relationship that I built is a trusted relationship. And I'm accountable for creating that environment that my mentee feels safe and comfortable in having those deep-seated conversations that we need in order to move forward with the healing journey and get to the root cause of some of the situations. And at the same time, feeling as though they're welcome to mentor you as a mentor and sort of, have you thought about it and suggested things to you? That would be an element of this over time. Now, I appreciate it in short versions of mentoring versus, you know, long-term versions of mentoring. All right. But I just wanted to acknowledge that is because sometimes I hear this very definitive, no, I am the mentor. <laughs> you are the mentee and this is how it will be. And if you want to do something different, but it's not going to happen in our connection, that sort of stunts. <laughs> it feels like it's sort of stunting the growth. It's giving a non-role model aspect to it. And I know in the area in which you're doing a lot of work at this point in time, there's a lot of flexibility that's necessary when you're dealing with uh, persons with mental health and, and psychological safety issues and things like that, that need to be really, um, you need to be a little bit more open to. Is that fair? Yes, it is. And you also, what I'm finding is that you also, open is a good term to use, but, but at the same time, I think I need to be intuitive enough that I can sense when things aren't quite right and that we need to have a little bit more of a conversation. And I'm, as an example, I'm having great success with uh, a protege that I have in the uh, U.S. military. So this, this individual has retired and is going through a number of different things and we're trying to do a career shift and get and do it in a manner that he or she is going to feel comfortable in doing this career shift. Now, the success that we're having it has spilled over into some other relationships that I'm not part of, but now they want to bring me in to be able to help the other mentor. So kind of mentor the mentor is to be able to help in, in seeing if we can do replicate what it is that I, I've been doing in order for this person to go on a similar uh, journey. And you, I think we, you know, we need to be cognizant of the fact that because of these individuals call for call to service, they have encountered some, or as a result of their call to service have now got uh, mental health challenges and stuff that they're having to deal with. And it's incumbent upon mentors who are going into those situations to intuitive enough to be able to, to sort of read the landscape, so to speak, and then to be able to take accountability for creating that safe place for the conversation to, to, to happen. So there's a, there's a sense here, and, and I want to use the word completion connected to accountability. And the reason I'm bringing it up is there's a lot of people who offer online courses. I'm, I'm one. You do some similar. But one of the things that we've noticed is that if someone signs up for a course, it doesn't mean they'll complete it. They'll connect into it. They'll consider it. They'll, okay, I convert my money exchange, right? I, I conclude the value, but I don't necessarily complete the course. I'm encouraging those who mentor is to find the footfalls, the markers that allow you to figure out that you are completing your accountabilities while you're in it, which requires the regular check-ins. I'm just sort of linking it 
mm-hmm. back into what we've what we've just shared because sometimes I've heard people talk in mentoring is they don't think of a word like completion is a word in mentoring. And again, I would go back to what I, or I ask you to just go back and listen to what I said about bringing new words in, new frameworks into this notion of holistic reciprocal mentoring. And one word is, how is it that we know we're completing our accountabilities as a mentor? That's the question I'm, I'm sort of asking at this point in time. Do you have a way in which you ensure your completion of accountabilities or I'll, I'll leave it there. Any thoughts? Well, what I'm typically, what I'm doing is I'm coming back to the check-in idea is I always like to circle back either at the end of a session or, or establish a time frame when it can take place. But I'm looking for validation uh, that my mentee is getting the value that they need or want from the from the relationship itself. Oh, I'll ask the question, what what's your takeaway from our conversation today? What are you, you know, what are some things that we need to work on in order to help advance the relationship, but also to be able to address any goals or objectives that we, you know, together that we've established. Yeah. Good points. Again, I, I we're sort of sharing similar stories, connections that are going with this. I just, again, is when you prepare for something like this, you sort of go, okay, what would I be worried about? And then this word completion for accountability came to mind. And I, that's why I shared this one at this point. So, so thank you for that. So this has been great. We have gone over four ways, uh, which um, add to the other six and other videos. If you look down in the show more notes, uh, you'll find the links to those. If not, just go to the uh, International Mentoring Community YouTube channel where you're probably watching this and or go back to it, you know, follow it, the, the, the uh, breadcrumbs back to it, where, which is a place where you can subscribe so you get notifications of when these um, new videos come out. And we love to um, read comments, so we welcome those as well. You know, the like, comment, and uh, subscribe is, is great. But uh, with these four today, lack of confidentiality, neglecting <laughs> per, uh, personal development, um, inconsistent feed forward, and the support that goes with that, and this notion of lack of accountability. These were four ways to negate it. Um, I think Doug and I have given you some insights into possible ways to counter those negations and um, to get you to be thinking about how to uh, enrich and strengthen your approach to mentoring. But I think Doug and I would be remiss if we didn't mention from a recognition of it, whereas you can use your mentoring log and reflections and get your recognition and get your testimonials. Consider, would it make sense for you to get certification and then to recertify with a group, a community that wants to advance, amplify mentoring. And that's what the international mentoring community is about. So we, we offer uh, an opening to that. Uh, you can go to um, the link that is provided down below and uh, go to the page that's there. It's uh, through wealthmovement.com forward slash mentor, just go down, click, and go into certification button, and you can get going from there. And one of the best ways to do that is to grab the um, profile for the certificate of practice journey mentor and do a self-assessment. Just find out where you are. Again, that's a form of recognition, the self-assessment. And then where would you fill your gaps? And that's where we can help. So the last thing I would just mention is one of the best ways to get involved is to grab a, a conversation with Doug or I. And uh, you can reach out through the comment section if you want us, or you can get a hold of us on our respective uh, website pages, uh, talentc.ca, wealthmovement.com, W-E-L-L-T-H. <laughs> 
and um, have a conversation with us and we'll be happy to get you started and on your way. So with that, Doug, I think we're into the closing and as tradition with any of the videos that Doug and I do together as co-founders of the International Mentoring Community is to have Doug share what he thought was a, a great idea or here's a, an idea I want to leave with you as you move forward as a mentor, mentee, if you're listening in from that perspective. When I know he has done and shared his idea, I will say take care and we will close off this uh, recording. So over to you, Doug. So I think that, you know, the conversation today was very dynamic, very powerful. One thing that sort of spread its wings over all four topics was the aspect of personal development and how important that is to, to a mentor to be able to continue to be able to provide a deeper, richer mentoring experience. And that's my, my personal takeaway from, from, this, from today's conversation. Well, thank you and take care, everyone.